Yo, what up, my home slice is how you doing? Episode 12 of BT Device Science. So today we're going to talk about the four fundamental forces, and I'm going to talk about three of them more than the fourth one, but that's because I want to talk about the fourth one in a longer 10-minute video by itself, because I think we can talk about that one for a long time. That one's electromagnetism. So I think electromagnetism is probably the coolest of the four fundamental forces, but the other ones are, of course, extremely important. What is a fundamental force? First of all, we have to kind of explain that just a little bit. A fundamental force means that no matter where you go in the entire universe, you're going to be affected by these fundamental forces. Every single atom is affected by a fundamental force. Every single little tiny itty bitty thing, every single big thing is affected by these fundamental forces. You cannot escape them. If you had one, if one of these fundamental forces didn't exist, the universe basically would not work the way it does right now. It would just be almost pretty much over. If you didn't have a gravity, everything would just fly off into everything and you wouldn't get balls mat matter anywhere. If you didn't have the strong nuclear force, you could never make atoms. If you didn't have the weak nuclear force, um, that one's probably the least important of them all, but it, things, that one would just make atoms extremely complicated and it really wouldn't make sense and you also wouldn't have decay. You'd probably get really, really big elements and basically cause a huge problem overall. Electromagnetism, like I said, is the coolest one of them all. If you didn't have that one, you wouldn't have light, you wouldn't have x-rays, you wouldn't have all these cool things that we think of as electromagnetism. So let's talk about the strong nuclear force first, because without the strong nuclear force, we wouldn't even have atoms. We wouldn't have atoms, the basic building blocks of how everything is built. So as you guys probably know from my previous videos, atoms are made up of, of course, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And a proton is also made up of three quarks. So, uh... The way that the strong nuclear force works is that you have a bunch of little positive charges in the middle of an atom. You have a bunch of protons in the very center nucleus of the atom, and you also have a bunch of neutrons in the, nu in the nucleus of an atom. And these neutrons, they don't really care where they are, but of course, if they're being held together in the middle of the nucleus, something has to be holding them there. But also, these protons are all positive charges, and based on the electromagnetic force, all these positive charges want to fly away. They want to go out into the middle of nowhere. They don't want to be near each other. They want to be with a negative charge, like the electrons. But they're not. They're a bunch of positive charges in one space. So that's what the nuclear force actually is. It's just all these positive charges being held together. But how does it actually work? Well, once you get down to the... Uh, quarks which make up the protons, the quarks interact with this big soup of particles that is pretty much everywhere in the universe. There's all these particles that you don't really think about that uh, have a lot to do with quantum mechanics that just are literally a soup in the entire universe. Everywhere there's a bunch of these particles. And they're not the particles that we usually think of like atoms or anything. They're just little particles that, that interact with certain things at certain times. So they, there's these things called gluons, which makes sense. Glue gluons. They glue things together. They glue these they glue these quarks together and uh, this force is much much stronger than the electromagnetic force. So that's what allows these guys to stay together. Basically it's just an interaction of particles that we call the strong nuclear force. Um, also, the strong nuclear force is much different than gravity and electromagnetism because the further quarks get away from each other the more strength you get in the force. So let's say we had two quarks that were we had really, really close together. You'd kind of have just a little bit of energy there. But if you pulled quarks really far away and you just kept pulling them, it'd be harder and harder to pull away. And basically the way I would explain it is kind of like a rubber band, or a really freaking strong rubber band at that. You, you're trying to pull these guys away, and the further you pull the rubber band away from, you, away from the center, it's going to be harder and harder, and eventually it's going to rip. And when that rubber band rips, guess what you get, guys? You don't get a ripped rubber band, you actually make new quarks. If you can put enough energy into these quarks where you can pull them far enough away, you actually form more matter. And that's how much energy it takes to move these quarks away from each other. It's a ridiculous amount of energy. So now here's the weak force. The weak force is a lot less important. In fact, it's probably the hardest to explain and the least important according to pretty much everybody. Um, the weak force has a lot to do with radioactive decay. And uh, this usually matters more for big elements, for example, if you have uranium, or anything over uh, iron, for that matter. All those elements, they want to radioactively decay. They want to get back down to iron. And for this decay to happen, basically you have to have a quark change flavor. And uh, there's six different quarks, basically, and they, these quarks, they have to change the flavor of the quark, or what the quark actually is, 
for radioactive decay to actually happen. And this can only happen with um, the exchange of these things called W and Z bosons. So it's a lot more complicated than you guys really need to know. But the weak force basically has to do with radioactive, de radioactive decay and has a little bit to do with... Um, um, changing quarks from one quark to the other. And it just sounds weird to, ch to just magically change quarks to another, but you're basically exchanging particles to change the quark. And that's really all we have with the weak force. Now gravity, this one's a really cool one. I, I think, of course, gravity, everybody's heard of gravity. Everybody knows what gravity is. Um, of course, if you heard it on Earth at 9.8 meters per second, but it changes throughout the universe based on how much mass is in that area or how close you are to that object. So gravity is, of course, the, weak, the second weakest force, which we don't really think about gravity being weak. When you stand up, it's actually kind of hard to stand up. It really is. It's kind of hard to stand up. It's, it's, if you want to raise 20 pounds off of the ground, it's kind of tough. But that's because we have a lot of mass underneath us. The Earth is extremely, extremely massive. On the other hand, if you have, like, uh, a magnet or something, and you try and push these two magnets together... We have really, really, really tiny magnets. These things are just tiny compared to the gigantic mega Earth that we that causes grav that causes gravity. These little tiny magnets are really hard to push together. So that just shows you how much stronger the electromagnetic force is compared to gravity, and that also shows how much stronger the strong nuclear force is compared to the electromagnetic force. It's big magnitudes here, guys, like millions of times stronger. Uh, when you talk about the difference of how strong these guys are. So how is gravity measured? Well, gravity is kind of relates to how close something is and how massive something is. So the Earth being very, very massive. Also, we're very close to Earth. In fact, we basically touch Earth. We basically touch it um, most of the time. Most of the time we're touching Earth, I think, unless we're in our house or something. But that just, I just call that touching Earth. So the more mass you get, the more pull you get. Also, that means, hold on, hold the phone. So, anything with mass has gravity. So that means you have gravity, I have gravity, everything has gravity. This little cup that you're, that you're holding up, if you have a cup in your hand or whatever you have, if you have a pillow, that pillow has mass. So when you drop it towards Earth, it's not just gravity pull, pulling it down. It's actually the pillow's pulling Earth up, but the pillow pulls Earth up at such a minute amount that it has basically no relevance to Earth at all. In fact, um, if... You just tried to get a really, really big weight, and you moved all this weight to one side of Earth, and you just dropped it. You'd actually measure Earth moving up just a little bit. It's kind of interesting to think about, but of course, as you'd have to move so much mass that it would just be unbelievable to actually do that. But also an interesting thing, that every, every time you jump, every time you get upstairs and stuff, you're actually affecting Earth and its gravity. But it's such a minute amount that it actually has no relevance to anything at all, and you could probably measure it, but you'd get... Point zero, and then probably close to 50 zeros or something like that, one, and that's how much you would f affect it. So, um, also, I, I said that gravity was a pull, right? I said that gravity's pulling us down. Well, not really. If you really want to kind of impress your friends or something, tell them that gravity doesn't actually pull you down. Gravity actually pushes you down. So, according to general rel relativity... Basically, wherever you have a massive object in space, space-time is being warped around that object. So just imagine Earth sitting in space, and you imagine this fabric of space-time. Whenever you warp it, or have some sort of mass there, it kind of creates a little, kind of like a bubble, and it basically pushes down on you. So actually, space is pushing you down. Gravity, gravity from Earth isn't really pulling you down. You're getting pushed down by space. So, I, I mean, I just thought that was a really cool thing. If you want to impress your friends or something, go tell them that gravity pushes you down. You don't get pulled down. Also, just a quick way to kind of uh, understand gravity or how the warping of space-time actually kind of occurs. Um, let's think about a two-dimensional object. So just think about a bed sheet, for, for, just as an example. You pull a bed sheet taut at all, all the edges. You pull it as tight as possible. And then put a bowling ball in the middle. So now the bowling ball basically warps that bed sheet down towards the center. And then you have this big, big uh, mess in space-time where there is just this... It, it's kind of hard to explain because you have this big ball that affects the uh, 
affects the bed sheet. And then, if, for example, if you threw a tennis ball on here and you threw it fast enough, you could kind of make it revolve around Earth or just go around. But of course, friction messes with it and it eventually falls down and hits the bowling ball. But uh, in space, it's frictionless and stuff like that. So this is sort of a bad example because gravity is actually doing all the work here and we're using something having to do with gravity to talk about gravity so it kind of doesn't really work very well but it also helps you understand how space-time warping actually works because gravity is actually making things fall towards it but it's just kind of a good example of how space-time is warped by mass I don't know I kind of repeated myself a couple times there sorry about that so now we're getting on to electromagnetism, and I'm not going to talk about this very much. I just want to explain what it is really fast. So I'll go into much, much more detail in a future video, because I think this is obviously the coolest fundamental force. So this basically says that electric electricity and magnetism are the exact same things. And uh, things that uh, come in waves, such as light, x-rays, radio waves, microwaves, they're all part of the same fundamental force, which is electromagnetism. So... Um, I'm going to go into much, much more detail, but basically radio waves are a very, very big wave, and then x-rays and stuff are very, very small waves. So that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, hopefully this helped out with understanding these fundamental forces just a little bit. They're extremely important to the universe, and I think I'm going very, very physics-y on you guys with these past few science videos. So eventually, after I take care of this electromagnetism video and a couple other videos I want to get through, I want to go to more biology topics and uh, some other cool topics. But that's all I got for you guys today, so thanks for watching, and have a good one.